Hey there, team! Chemistry Coach coming back at you again in our journey on using a mathematics in chemistry. So we're going to do the metric system now. Again, I'm assuming you've already been through this, so we'll we'll do a quick little summary of uh, metric conversions. Really, we're going to be doing metric conversions all the time because, like with the scientific notation video that hopefully you watched, we get lots of really small numbers in chemistry. And we hate all those leading zeros that are not significant, 0 0.00000, blah, 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 28, whatever. We like to express those in more simplified formats. So scientific notation is a great example of doing that, where you alter the number but not the unit. Well, with the metric system and metric prefixes, we can convert and change the, the value into a more condensed format. But we don't need scientific notation. All we do is just change the metric prefix. Oh, and it simplifies the numbers and wipes out a lot of those non-significant zeros. So two ways we can attack it. Um, of course, you know, uh, we originally we did a lot, you know, things, measure things with English units. We probably grew up with that if you're uh, or, uh, raised in America. You know, you measure things in inches and you do your height in feet and inches and your weight in pounds and whatnot. Um, but in, in chemistry, we're, we're using the metric system for this. Technically... The more modern format of that should technically be called SI units. So really, instead of saying metric units, we should, we should say SI units. But everybody just says metric units. You know, measuring things in centimeters or millimeters or measuring volumes in milliliters, liters. So we have this base metric unit, like a liter, right, or a meter or something, or a gram. And we can adjust that by putting a prefix in it. So instead of liter, we can do a milliliter. Instead of a gram, I can do a kilogram or a milligram, right? And it alters the number into a nice condensed format. So um, this is French. I could not pronounce this to save my life, but the S, it's an international system uh, for measurements. Système international de unités. I have no idea if I said that right. We just call it the international system of units, but it comes from French système international, uh, SI, right? SI units. Um, so we got them for length, we got them for mass, you know, temperature, et cetera, et cetera. What we like about this versus the English system, you know, 12 inches per foot and, you know, 5,280 feet per mile is like, you got to memorize these things. They don't make a lot of sense. Historically, they're interesting where those conversions come from. But we love as chemists the metric system because it's decimal based. Yay! Right? Kind of like uh, when the, the um, American monetary system was created. I think Jefferson helped de design that based on, you know, 100 uh, cents per dollar and 10 cents per dime and 10 dimes per dollar. Very easy to remember and figure out, right? Until I started making three cent coins. What the heck? You've probably never seen one, but they made three cent coins back in the day. So we can take really large or small values and simplify them like scientific notation, but instead using a metric prefix. Boom. That expresses powers of 10. So like kilo, right, is 10 to the third, those kinds of things. So you probably know quite a few of these. I'll list them all out on the next board. We'll kind of design what these reference units are, like what is a meter. It's different now with this new international system of measurements than what it used to be because what they used to use like to define a meter was something that could change, right? If you use like a, a metal bar, the length of a metal bar, well, remember, if it's hotter, if the temperature goes up, it's thermally expanding. So it's actually a little bit longer at a higher temperature. That's not a good reference point because then you have to specify a specific temperature. So they have redefined the meter, and I'll talk about that when we do it. And we'll use the meter as an example to introduce different metric prefixes and to show how we can change the value based on factors of 10 or powers of 10. And another thing we love about metric inversions, they're exact. Yay! They're defined values. whoop de woo So lots of metric to metric conversions. I love to throw those in there. And, of course, we're constantly going go have to go have to go from metric or SI units to English units to be able to converse with non-chemistry people, right, uh, at least in America. Um, you know, if I ran around, you know, giving people my height in centimeters, they'd be like, ah, right? What does that even mean? <laughs> so we got to get good at that. We'll do that in another video where we do unit line equations uh, to set up dimensional analysis to convert one unit to another. So let's throw some crazy metric prefixes up here. I'm going to have you memorize some, but not all. There's some really wacko ones out there. Feast your eyes on this. 
<laughs> all right. I mean, I put up some weird ones. That's not even all of them. I just ran out of board space. There's some really wackadoo metric prefixes. Gotta love them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this green pen and put a little dot next to the ones that I would like you to memorize because we're going to use them so long. You probably have four, five, six of these memorized already because you use them so much. But I just want you to memorize ones that we're going to use all the time in lab and in chemistry calculations. Um, and then in everyday life, you're going to run into things. Um, you're probably familiar with some of these terms because they've incorporated into certain things like computer storage, you know, like gigabytes and terabytes and those kinds of things. So you're probably familiar with them, but I want you to know if you're running around, yeah, I got a two terabyte computer. I'd like you to know what that actually means in case someone goes, well, what does that mean? And you're like, I don't know. I just know I paid a lot of money for it. Back in my day, it was like kilobytes. All right, here we go. And, uh, and we, can, you, we can apply these to any unit, meter, gram, liter, mostly SI or metric units. But I guess sometimes you'll see some of these applied to English units like a kiloton or a megaton bomb or something like that. But mostly it's just applied because it would be really weird to say, you know, I'm, I'm 0.48 mega feet tall. I, mean, so I, I don't even know if that number made sense, I'm, but that just sounds weird putting a, a, a an SI unit or metric prefix in front of pounds, right? It, this is really weird. You could do it. I guess officially you could do it, but it just sounds weird, right? So anyway, um, you're probably familiar with kilo, right? If you watch Cheech and Chong, hey, kilo, man, I got a kilo, right? So we know Cheech it means I've got a kilogram or a thousand grams or 10 to the third grams of white powder, right? <laughs> so you got a lot of love. Cheech and Chong still smoking, baby. Um, so deca or DA, that's 10 to the one, right? Hecto, it's a hundred, kilo, a thousand, 10 to the third. Mega, right? We think mega, big, like a megaton bomb. Capital M, that's 10 to the 6th, or 1 million. Giga, capital G, 10 to the ninth, or 1 billion. A giga dollars is 1 billion dollars. Terra, 10 to the 12th, or 1 trillion. Getting to Peta, 10 to the 15th, and Exa, 10 to the 18th. That's way too big for chemistry. So the ones that we'll run into in chemistry, obviously... We're going to hit kilo quite a bit. So I want you to memorize that if you haven't already, 10 to the third. So we use kilograms a lot. I'd like you to know mega, even though we don't use it a whole lot in chemistry, I'd like you to know what mega is. Giga, of course, because of the computer industry. And now, in the last several years, tera, right? You get some stored space in the terabytes. So I would memorize those four. These two, I've personally never used. Um, I've never used hecto and I've never used a deca. I guess we could, but I've never seen them used. So I'm not going to force you to memorize them, right? But I would memorize those four. Kilo, mega, giga, tera. 10 to the 3, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 9, 10 to the 12. All by factors of 1,000. I think that's pretty easy. And you know these are big. Giga, mega, tera, rah, terraforming. You're right, changing planets. Right? Mega man, mega mouse. Let's go to the small side. This is more the chemistry side, right? So deci, or like a decimeter, 10 to the minus 1 or 0.1 meter. Centi, you're probably familiar with, right? So 10 to the minus 2. Uh, milli, 10 to the minus 3. So I like to look at them as opposites. So like milli is 10 to the minus 3. Kilo is 10 to the 3. So they're like evil cousins, right? Or, or you know, mirror images of each other. I'm going to show you a different way that I look at this rather than memorizing these numbers because I can never remember, is it a negative 12 or a positive 12? I'm like, eh. So when I do metric conversions, uh, converting one metric uh, prefix to another, um, like meters to terameters or whatever, I avoid the negative exponent. So I set it up in a way so that I don't ever have to worry about a negative exponent. And I'll show you how to do it. I don't care how you do it, but if you like my way, great. If not, just memorize these pu the puppies I put a green dot next to. All right, so micro, obviously microscopes thinking small, 10 to the minus 6 or a millionth. Uh, so a micrometer is a millionth of a meter. Getting down, you've probably heard of uh, nanoscience or nanotechnology. I think Iron Man with his nanobot suit or nanobite, whatever it is that he has. Um, nano in billionth, 10 to the minus 9. Um, so nano and pico getting to the atomic scale. So pico 
like picometers. Now you're getting into the like the diameters of, of atoms, right? 100, 200 picometers, 10 to the minus 12th, a trillionth, right? Trillionth of a meter, a, a picogram, a trillionth of a gram. Femto, that, now we don't really do that in chemistry. That's getting you know, thousands of a trillionth. But there's, um, I think, lasers, like pulse lasers now with femtosecond pulses. Oh, it's just amazing. I think if you're into that Zewail, Z-E-W-A-I-L, got a Nobel Prize for applying these, these femtosecond lasers or something like that. Haven't looked at it for a while, but you could Google that and check it out. It's fascinating things they're doing with these pulse lasers. Um, it's like a camera with a fast shutter speed or something. Atto, attaboy, right? A, 10 to the minus 18, and Zepto, 10, what's that? 10 to the minus 21. We're not going to be using those. So the ones that you need to know for chemistry is centi, right? Because we me measure things in centimeters usually. Milli, we're going to be measuring a lot of things in milligrams. Micro, of course. We're going to be using that quite a bit. Nano, obviously nano and pico are big ones in chemistry. But anything beyond that's not used very often. So I would memorize one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're good with nine. I think you can handle that. Make a little flash card or something. Carry it around in your pocket, walking across campus, sitting on the toilet, stuck at a red light, pull out the note card, a little, little look at it, you know, you put it on one side, and, you know, go nano, flip it over, 10 minus nine, blah, 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 blah. Right? Whatever works for you. Laminate it, tape it up in the shower while you're taking a shower, you can memorize these metric prefixes. Let me show you a quick way that I set it up to where I don't ever have to worry about the negative exponents. Optional for you. If this works for you, great. If not, great. Doesn't matter to me. But it helps me uh, if you have issues memorizing things. I've always had a real hard time. I have to memorize things by doing things over and over and over and over and over, and it just kind of sinks in. But just rote memorization can be challenging. I have to like, like I'm, I, I sing, um, and trying to memorize music, um, I was always slower at it. Um, I wasn't good at reading music, so I have to listen to it over and over. So I'd listen to these songs hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, and it would just sink in, just just the brute force method, hit your face against the wall and bleed. It works, but it takes a lot longer. It's not super efficient. But this worked for me because I couldn't remember, you know, if they're like, Pico is, and I'd be like, Pico, isn't that 12? Is it positive 12 or negative 12? Ah! And then, then if you get the wrong, if it's negative and you put positive or backwards, you're off by 10 of the... 24th power edge, something wacko. So what I do, using meters as an example, and again, the meter now is defined differently than it used to be. It used to be, you know, like the distance, a certain distance on the planet between here and there, which would change, and then the length of a certain bar, which could change with temperature. Now it's, uh, I don't know the exact definition off the top of my head, it's how far light travels in a set amount of time, this insignificant, like one over like 300,000 seconds or 299 something thousand, I forget the exact number, but it's around one over 300 thousandths of a second, how fast light travels in a vacuum or something. So that's pretty constant, right? So that's now defined as what a meter is, just like a second is now defined as something with a radioactive decay. I can't remember off the top of my head, I probably should look that up, but you can look that up and let me know. But let's say we have this one meter as our base, all right, and getting bigger, we know kilo, the way you remember this is look at, if I want to look at the, between a kilometer and a meter, you need to know which one's the bigger metric prefix, right? Even though meter doesn't have a metric prefix, but I know kilo is bigger. A kilometer is bigger than a meter. I know this from personal experience, right? I'm a sprinter. I remember running the 100 meter dash. I was a 100 meter dash, 200 meter dash, and 400 meter dash runner. And this 400 just killed you. Um, so I have a rough idea. Meter's about... Well, you can't see it. Look, can you see how big that is? <laughs> about three feet or so. I used to run. I was old enough where I would run the 100-yard dash. Then I got switched to the 100-meter dash, which is a little bit longer. So those of you who ran the 100-yard dash and you compare your time to those of us who ran the 100-meter dash, that's not a fair comparison because they're different distances. So the way I look at it, I go, okay, which is the bigger unit? Kilometers bigger. So I always put a one in front of the bigger one. I put one kilometer. And then how many meters, knowing kilos 10 to the 3, there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So 1 kilometer is 1 times 10 to the 3rd meters. It gives me a positive exponent. As long as I put a 1 in front of the bigger unit, I'll always have a positive exponent in the other one. I, that way I always avoid the negative exponent. So I just memorize whether things are 10 to the 3rd or 10 to the 5th or 10, uh, 10 to the 6th, 10 to the ninth type of stuff. 
So mega I know is bigger. So a mega meter is bigger than a meter. Mega is 10 to the 6. So one mega meter is 1 times 10 to the 6 meters. I know giga is 9. So one giga meter, since giga meter is bigger than a meter, I put a 1 in front of the bigger one. And that's 1 times 10 to the 9th meters per giga meter. Tera I know is bigger. So I put a 1 in front of the tera meter. Tera is 12. So that's 1 times 10 to the 12th meter. So I go kilo is 3, mega is 6, giga is 9, tera is 12. 3, 6, 9, 12. Kilo, mega, giga, tera, right? And if we go the other direction, since like if we do centimeters, a meter is bigger than a centimeter. A meter is bigger than a millimeter. A meter is bigger than a micrometer, right? So I put a one in front of the meter when I'm going to the smaller metric prefixes. And then I go, well, how many of the smaller ones go into the bigger one? So I get a positive exponent. So I just memorize that centi is 10 to the 2 or just a two, right? In the other board, it was 10 to the minus two. So a centimeter is 10 to the minus two meters. But I look at it as, well, there's one times 10 to the two centimeters or 100 centimeters per meter. Boop, it's easier because I get the positive exponent and I avoid the negative exponent. When I do milli, I know a millimeter is 10 to the minus third meters, but there are 1,000 millimeters in one meter. If you put a one in front of the bigger unit, then you're gonna have a positive 10 to the three. So milli and kilo are both three. You see that? But kilo is the bigger, so there's a thousand meters per kilometer, and milli is smaller, so there's a thousand millimeters per meter. If that doesn't work for you, that's great. Just memorize the other board. Micro, of course, is smaller, so there's one times ten to the six, or a million micrometers per meter. And micro and mega are the opposites of each other. They're both ten to the six. It's just one's positive six right there, and then uh, there's 10 to the minus six meters is one micrometer, or 10 to the six micrometers is one meter. You could do it either way, doesn't matter. My way avoids the negative exponent. Nano, right, nano is nine. So one meter is one times 10 to the ninth, or one billion meters, I mean nanometers. One billion nanometers is one meter. So nano and giga are twins to me. And then pico, Right? Pico is really small, so if I have one meter, there's one times 10 to the 12 picometer. So pico and tera are matched. Nano and giga are matched. So pico and tera are 12. Nano and giga are 9. Micro and mega are 6. Milli and kilo are 3. For me, it simplifies it. Have at it. And what we're going to do is take these expressions. For example, this expression right here. When we are converting one unit to another, we're going to use this as what's called a conversion factor. So we can set this up as 1 times 10 to the third meters per kilometer or kilometer, right? So we can take these and set them up as conversion factors when we do unit line equations and dimensional analysis later. So again, we're making no card for those ones I, I put green dots next to and have at it. All right, let's do it.